This is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with the Gina B. Aaron's Design Team Challenge for the month of July. And that challenge is to make a tag out of Gina's products from her Etsy store. I will put my discount code at the bottom in the description box so that you can get a discount on the things that I'm about to show you that came from Gina Shop. <laughs> I'm looking around as I'm saying that going, ooh, I'm not prepared. All right, so I ran off two sheets of digi paper. One is green, that's going to the bottom of the tag for the ground. And then I ran off a blue digi paper, and that is going to be the sky on my tag. I also used three different colors of quilling paper. This is called grape, and it's one quarter inch. This is called deep yellow, also one quarter inch, and this is sage green, also one quarter inch. It's really important that you use the same size throughout the whole project. That's that. Then I used two of Gina's stencils. This one is called Thank You What If NC Stencils for putting the name at the bottom because I never remember. Um, this is called Foursquare. And I, I'm going to use this flower and this flower. Well, I call them flowers. Somebody else might call them something else. And then this one also, this one is called Atomic 12, but I'm using it as the base for a flower. Now, Gina stencils can be used for a variety of things, and you're only limited by your own, imagina your own imagination. Um, you can use these in jelly prints. You can trace them and doodle inside them. If you're not a huge drawer, you can just trace around this and then do little marks inside here. Mine's gonna be a little different. Well, I will show you in a second. You're gonna need glue. Now I tried this one and it makes too big of a glob of glue. I wasn't, I didn't like how big the hole is, so I used this, yes, this. I, I, in the video, I rotate between all four of these. You know, let's, let's be concise. You need a pencil. You need the needle tool. You need a pair of tweezers. You need a pair of smallish paper scissors. You need a slotted tool. I used, um, I use this form, what is this one called? I can't remember, is this, this is not a big bite. This is a, whatever. Anyway, um, I use this to poke the hole in it. Where's my small ruler? I have the small plastic ruler that has all the holes in it, which I cannot put my hands on at the moment. And then I used these, which is explained or shown in the video later where you smear the glue on them. The nice thing is, is once these guys dry, all you have to do is peel the glue off and you can use them. Look at that, I used a ton of glue, look at that. You can peel it off and it's smooth again and can be reused on another project later. Sometimes if you can't see it, I take the needle tool and I'll run it down there and poke underneath it and it pulls it right up. Okay, so where is that little little ruler I used? There it is. And then I use this, the little hole ruler that has one through six at six inches long. I think that is everything that I used in the video for tools. I tried not to make it too, too complicated. And now on to the video. I glued the sky portion and the ground portion on in the intro that I accidentally deleted. <laughs> Say la vie. Um, and then I used a piece of leftover, what am I gonna call it? Leftover um, chipboard from another project. The piece that I use is two and a half inches across, eight inches in length. All right, so on to the video. And I hope you enjoy it. It's a little chopped up because it was took me an hour to film and I didn't want to put a whole hour long video on. That's crazy. For me, it's crazy. And I'm trying to whack it down into something a more manageable size, somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes. So we'll see. 
thanks. Don't you know it? <laughs> okay, I have glued the sky and the grass. Wow, there's a lot of light in here today. It's very sunny, sorry. Um, I've glued the light blue and very pale green grass on here. And I discovered from the last time that I made one of these that I need to poke my hole in here first because if I don't, I will not have a place that, oh, and I didn't put it center. Oh, well, um, I had a flower up too high and almost didn't have a place to put the hole there. So I did the hole this time and guess what? It's not centered. <laughs> I don't think I should talk and craft at the same time. <laughs> Holy Moses. All right, oh, uh, let's see. I'm going to be using a makeup sponge, and this is Momento Lux Elderberry. Now, in the beginning, I said you need a pencil, and the reason you need a pencil is because this design right here is going to be completely covered up with paper, so you will not see the paint or the um, ink on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline the stencil with a pencil. Lightly. I say that as I see how dark it is. And I want to fill it all in with quilled things. So this one is going to have See how it's very light? light pencil drawing. Now the rest of them will have um, will have the ink on it. Alright, so this one I will ink. Okay, now see this is why I ran into trouble last time. <laughs> I got too close and nobody could see anything because I was out of frame. Alright, and I don't want this to overlap this because there's going to be something tall here, and I don't really want to overlap my flowers. So I'm going to tilt, actually, yeah, I'm going to tilt this one to the side. And let's see, I want to use this one also. Modern Atomic 12 because this makes a great flower where you will see a lot of color here, you'll see a lot of color in this one, and the color from this one will be strictly the quilling. All right, so let me think about how I'm going to do this. Do I want to put this here and then, yeah, I don't want my things to overlap. If it was any other way, I would overlap them, but this is not going to do well overlapped. So let's bring this down a little bit because I know what I'm going to do above. And I'm just talking to myself like an income poop. All right. <laughs> so I'm just going to ink this up real quick. Make sure I want it dark enough that it'll show on the blue. Excellent. All right. And then I'm going to do one of these a little bit lower. And I'm staggering them. One will go this way, one will go this way, one will go this way, and then, you know, so on and so forth. If this was something where I could mask it off, I would, except for I'm going to be using depth with the um, quilling paper, so I can't, I don't want to overlap. I haven't gotten confident enough with this method to overlap my quilling into other quilling. So I'm not real confident about doing that yet. It'll come. I'm sure it'll come with time. All right, so... Here's my and again I want this dark because you want to see it. Okay. So that's those two. There's the ink for that. Hopefully it will dry by the time I get to this part. Alright, so the thing I want to start with is to measure my paper or pull my paper out. So I got one, two, three, four, five pieces of paper. I'm going to start, and then I have leftovers from 
when I recorded the other day. It was a mess. Hang on a second. Okay. So I think what I want to do is I want to try to do the outline this way first. Because, well, yeah, I think I'm going to do the outline first. So let's see if we can do that. Since I have this extra paper here, uh, I'm going to try and use this. Now, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but I'm going to say it now. You will need um, two some, you know, how we all say the door, the uh, key cards from hotels. You'll need two of them that are perfectly flat and lovely on the top that are pretty clean. Don't have, like, look at mine. <laughs> they are nasty. All right, this one's not too bad. Oh, it's clean on the back. back. All right, so I'm going to save those and set those aside. And then you're going to need some spreadable glue because you're going to spread this stuff out so that you can dip your quilling paper in it. And this is a method that I saw on someone else's quilling YouTube video, and I will put that in the description box below. This woman is phenomenal. She is way better at this than I am. And I'm so excited that she's put a video out, where's my Elmer's, um, that, so that I can learn from her. Because this is all new to me, this kind of quilling where you do the um, paper up, standing on its side. That's, that's a new thing for me. Okay, my Elmer's glue has been sitting there a while. So I'm going to shake it up make sure it doesn't separate because if Elmer's glue is a little bit old it does separate into a very watery looking opaque fluid and that's not what you want. So there you go. There's what Elmer's should look like. Now this is very watery.
Okay, so here are the two finished pieces. This is the first one that I did where some of the footage did not go well because I was out of frame the whole time. <laughs> so there's my first one. Then I made this one for the second time. I The only thing I tried to do was to use the same basic shape. So this one right here is this one. And then of course this one's this one. And this is a new shape. And then I made it look kind of like a tulip by putting the triangle shapes at the top. I wanted to use a little snippets of color with the yellow. I didn't want it to be just the uh, elderberry or the plum color with the green. I needed just a little touch of color and I did that on both of them. So there they both are and here are the stencils that I used and I will list those down below along with my discount code in the uh, description box. And then I just picked random digi paper. You can paint your own but the stencils are kind of important. There you go and plus you get four stencils on this and you get six on this one, so really good deals. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed watching me fumble through this project. <laughs> I will see you guys in August. Bye-bye.